Excel just released the new checkbox feature. So let's learn not just how to insert one, but also how to create a progress bar to track our stages and how to cross out any projects that we've completed. So let's get into it. So first up, to add a checkbox, all you need to do is head over to the Insert tab and all the way to the side, you'll find the checkbox under Cell Controls. Just click on that and that's going to activate it. From here, we can just simply tick or untick. We can also do that with the space sign instead of clicking in it. To add checkboxes to several cells, we just need to select them like this whole area and simply click on checkbox again. Now, if we hover over a specific cell and click on it, you'll see that it simply says false, but if we go ahead and tick it, it's gonna switch to true. So let's now drag these all the way across. So I'm just gonna hit Control R to drag them to the right and just hit the space key to deselect all of them. Now, if you want to change the color of them, you can simply go under home and it's the same as any other text. So let's suppose that we wanna go for a dark blue color. I would simply select on that. Now, if you don't have this checkbox feature available, in just a few seconds, I'm going to show you an alternative option. But first, let me explain why you don't currently see it. Basically, it's still being rolled out as a beta test. So if you wanna get access to it and any other new features that Microsoft releases, simply sign up to this Microsoft 365 Insider program with the link over here, which I'll also link to it in the video description. And for the record, I'm not being paid to say this. It's just trying to help you out here. Now let's take a look at another method to add a checkbox that should be available to all of you. So we wanna head over to the developer tab. If you're unable to find it, just go to any other tab and just right click and click on customize the ribbon. From here in the main tabs towards the bottom, you should find the developer. So if that's not ticked, just make sure you tick on it, hit on okay, and then you should be able to find it. Now, within this area, we want to insert the checkbox. Let's suppose I select this cell over here. I'm just going to go to insert and we want to select this one, which is the checkbox. And it's basically going to act like any other shape. So we can just drag that out and you'll see what that looks like. We can get rid of all of that text as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit delete. Let me resize this and put this a bit more to the center here. Now to test this out, let's select out of it and you can see that it's a fully functional checkbox. If I want to go ahead and copy it, I just simply need to hit Ctrl D to drag down or Ctrl R to drag to the right. One thing to note with this alternative version is that you don't get the true false like you do here. If I select on this cell, you can see that I have the false and if I tick on it, I have the true. This is actually something that we'll need later for the progress bar. So for this part here where we don't actually have a true false, Let's go ahead and add one ourselves, simply by first selecting on the checkbox by hitting the control and click. Now we have that checkbox selected and not the cell. Then in the formula bar here, we want to click on it and go to equals and simply link on the cell itself. So in this case, it's E14 for me and I'm just going to hit enter. Now, if we go ahead and tick on it, you'll see that it says true there and false when it's unticked. Obviously, it's a bit annoying that it's right behind, so we can simply change the color of it by go going to the home, home tab there and just clicking on white so we can't see it anymore. Unfortunately, you can't drag this down or copy it across, so you will need to go manually into the next one and do the same thing. So select that area first, control click, and then equals to the cell itself and hit enter. So now you have the exact same function and you wanna repeat this process for all the other checkboxes. Now let's go over why this true or false is important by creating the progress bar. So over here we have the tracker and what we wanna do is basically filter by those that say true. Now, if it is true, that's going to be 50% done. Over here, it's gonna be 75% done and so on and so forth. So when it says false, it's simply not going to count it. Like over here, it says false because it's unticked. So I'm just going to go to equals and the formula that I'll use is the count if. Hit the tab key there and the range that we're interested in is all of these over here. So these four at the moment, I'm gonna hit the comma key and the criteria is that they have to be true. So I'm just gonna put it there in quotations, close up parenthesis and hit enter. So right now it's counting that three of these are true, which does make sense. If I untick one, it's two of them that are true. 
That said, this isn't quite in percentage format, which is the way we would like it, and the way that makes more sense than just seeing a 2 there, 50% is probably better. So a quick and dirty solution here would simply be to divide it by the number of stages, which in this case is by 4 stages, and hit enter. So that's 50% there. Now to change this to percentage format, we can hit on Alt H P. That's actually the same thing as clicking over here. Let me go ahead and center this as well. Now we can drag this down simply by double clicking there. So we've got 0% there, but as we go ahead and start ticking on some, that keeps moving up all the way to the 100. So it all seems to be making sense there. Awesome, now we have the percentages and next up we just need to create some kind of a bar visual but before that, according to Forbes, almost 90% of Excel files have errors in them. Now, if you don't want to get in trouble with your manager by falling into that category, you can consider checking out our Excel for Business and Finance course to learn all the industry best practices to impress your manager and avoid any errors. With our comprehensive curriculum, we cover everything you need to know, ranging from formatting best practices and shortcuts, to building awesome visual dashboards, creating large dynamic financial models, and much more. This is basically the course I wish I had before getting into Excel-heavy business and finance jobs. If all of that sounds interesting, check out the link in the description below. And if you want more than just Excel, we also have bundles that include the Excel and Power BI course, which is very popular for data analytics, as well as the Excel and finance evaluation bundle, which makes sense for those of you interested in the financial services industry. All right, back to the video. To insert a project tracker, we first wanna select the whole area, so control shift down for all of these percentages. And we'll simply go inside conditional formatting under data bars here, we can either pick a gradient one, we can hover over them to see what they look like, or a solid fill one. Let's suppose we go for this gradient green one. Now it's all looking good there, but let's suppose I untick the stage four, we're at 75% and it's still showing like it's 100% done, which doesn't quite make sense. So let's go ahead and revise all of these rules by going to conditional formatting and going to manage rules towards the bottom here. This is the one that we want to try to edit to see what's going on there. What's happening is that this is on a relative scale. So right now 75% is the highest. So it's thinking of that as the maximum. But what we want to do here is in this drop down, put a number. And because we're talking in percentages, the highest number is a one. And then over here for a number, the lowest one, the minimum is a zero. So from zero to one is the same as 0% to 100% and we'll hit on apply there, hit on okay. And now you can see that it's making more sense. If we go all the way to the max, it goes to 100 and it only gets activated at 25%. So it's all looking good. One final element that's missing here is a strike through when the project is complete. If we take a look over here at the file, right now Cloud Chaser, this project is finished, but it's kind of hard to tell that it's the case because we don't have that strike through effect on it. So let's go ahead and try to add that as well by first selecting this whole area. So control shift down and then conditional formatting. And we want to create a new rule entirely. So new rule there. And we want that to be to use a formula to determine which cells to format. So down over here, it's going to depend on our stage four. So if stage four is true, then that's all done. So we'll just select on that first one in stage four but we want to be able to drag these down. So we want to remove that dollar sign from the three. The dollar sign basically locks it, so it keeps it at this row, but we want to be able to move down across the different rows. That's why we're deleting that dollar sign. And now, well, what do we want to see? Under format here, we first want to see a strike through. So you can see the preview there. Let's also make this in a green color, just to show that, hey, it's completed. So that's a positive thing. We'll hit on okay there. Okay again. And now you can see that Cloud Chaser is finished because it's at 100%. So we have that strike through. If I go ahead and add it on this one as well, you'll see that as soon as I add the stage four, that's all finished. Awesome. And just like that, in a few minutes, we've managed to make checkboxes all across this whole area. We've also managed to add a dynamic tracker, 
And finally, we've managed to add the strike through to make sure everyone sees the project is finished. To learn how to make an awesome search bar in Excel, check out this video over here or take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.